excited to get started on this project for um, Taking Up Space 2023. I have already collected artwork. I put out a call for art and had um, over 30 artists have, have submitted work that we're going to use to create a data set to um, train uh, an artificial intelligence model on using Playform. The images that were collected through submissions are going to form a data set. And so I've made some minor edits in Lightroom just to make them more similar to make a better data set for us. And I also removed any like signatures that would show up weird in the data set. So um, that's those are the only edits I've made to the images that were submitted. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and show you what Playform looks like. Playform is the software that I've been using to train AI models on my work for a couple years now, and um, it's a creative adversarial network. Um, so essentially, it's like computer brains talking to each other back and forth to learn um, how, like what my style looked like and how to reproduce in different ways. Um, so it's not reproducing exactly, but it's informed by everything that I'm training it on and then it will create new works and we can tweak those in different ways and we'll get into that. Um, so whenever you come to uh, playform.io, you will see this um, banner here. There is a way to do NFTs through Playform. Um, and then you can scroll down. You can kind of see some of the featured projects here by community members. Then there are featured community posts, which you can browse through. And there are uh, collections of images that you can work with if you don't, if you just want to come in and play and don't have 30 plus images of your own work to put in here just yet. And then there are projects. You can look through any projects that are made public. And they're not all um, public, but you can Keep, make yours private if you like. So you can choose to share things here. They're not all public by default. Um, so there's a create project button there, but I'm going to click on home. And this is going to be all of these different projects that I've done. Um, and we're going to click create new project. There are a lot of different options and you'll see everything that pops up here. We've got some shortcuts. We've got some sketch models, and then we're going to go down here to train a model. So we're going to train our own program from scratch um, from the image sets that we that we have. And that was what I put out the call for art. And those are the images that I received with that. So um, there are some different ways we can train a model. I like Freeform. I use Freeform the most. Um, it generates a sequence of images that are amalgamations of a single collection where creative morph and style transfer, you need to have two separate collections of data, um, of images. So there's two separate data sets. Creative morph brings all those together and style transfer is going to apply the style of one data set to another. So we're going to go with freeform and I'm just going to ignore everything else right now. And you could watch this little video here if you want about the process and look through some examples of how freeform is used. Um, but we are going to uh, train a model with the freeform module and we have to have one set of 30 plus images um, and the inspiration that the AI learns from here is going to be just the images that we give it. So there's no other outside influence coming in um, and if they are really consistent, um, like we see here there are some um, cyanotypes here of some sort of organic forms and I would guess that all of the input looked very similar to these. Um, with my waveform work I have done all waveforms or um, you know I've done all abstracts and we have a mix so I have no idea what this is going to look like which makes it very exciting um, to see how all of these representations of different artists and their work will all go into this amalgamation and how they'll be represented in the whole of the, the data set, how that comes through. So the results are going to be 1024 by 1024 pixels. So they're very small. Um, if you were to print them, they'd be like, you know, an inch. So then we have, um, we're going to get 64 images per snapshot. And then the recommended training time here is going to be two hours and 30 minutes. And we'll get about 50 snapshots out of that training time um, per image. So it's going to give us 
you'll see these little snapshots that come up um, and you'll understand this explanation better once we get into it. So we're going to click Create Project. And here it's going to tell us this is our inspiration and it's going to inform the shapes and contours of our results. And we have to have at least 30 images to train a model. So we can name our project up here. We'll call it Representations. And I can just click because I was doing that before. Um, some different options here. We could make it public there as well. And then I'm just going to click Add Collection. So there are different ways you can add your collection. Uh, if you're active in Playform, then you may have some things bookmarked that you could use that were from the community. You can find them and use them in the community here. You may already have collections uploaded, which you could use there. We're going to go ahead and click to upload our images. All right, so now we'll enter our collection name. And then we'll leave this private. Um, we could upload more if we needed to. We're going to select a category. I'm going to go with painted and drawn. And then we have to add some tags. So let's say art. If you go down, you can add them. Painting. See what else have we got? Let's go with the abstract art. Um, and then we can also do digital. Sorry about my dog. And let's make sure we do I'll add this in here and I mean, we can really tag these however we want but um, we're not making it public so it's really not going to matter all that much except for to us but you want you do have to add some and so then when we're done tagging this we can just click on add to inspiration and now we have our inspiration right here so this shows us we've got 33 images in this set um, and we're not going to add another collection, but I'm going to click up here and we're going to do begin training. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so this is this is where the magic happens, and we're just going to leave this right here on the recommended training time. We can always train it more later. Um, we're going to get the number of iterations that the model will be trained for, so 12,000. And then we've got snapshots created, so it shows you here the number of results um, sets generated during training you'll be able to go through these results during and after training so there'll be a slider and you'll be able to see that each essentially each image is going to have like 50 different snapshots throughout its creation estimated image results so total images um, will be 3200 and then the resolution here is going to be 1024 by 1024. Um, this shows us our Current balance, I have 312 credits and it's going to cost 15 to train um, and then gives me my ending balance. So you know this going in. Um, I have a studio level plan with Playform and you can select different levels of plans depending on your needs. You can start for free and um, you get some credits to try it out and then it is going to tell you here it says one credit will give you 10 minutes of training. That training cost, essentially what we're paying for is the computing power because this all happens on a different computer than the one that we're using. So this happens somewhere else, um, which is also why it takes more time to, you know, we have to train this, but also whenever we make changes um, later on, we have to remember that this is all happening on um, a brain of computers elsewhere. Um, so this, this does cost money, and so we end up getting credits. Um, and it's it's pretty good because we're actually getting a really good deal with your credits. Um, I will let you know that. So once we have this, we can click right here. Mirroring is going to be um, if you have a very small data set, it can flip it vertically and horizontally. If you had like 
all pictures of people, you might want to turn mirroring off because you don't want it to flip them upside down and start to make like, you know, different, different versions of like people being upside down. You want them all to be one way. Um, these are your save intervals here. So this is going to be how many snapshots are generated. So we can do a higher number of snapshots. Um, and then it's really good for when we create videos, there'll be more snapshots available for better transitions. So you will see how this is going to go ahead and change here to reflect the number of snapshots created. So since we're, we're doing this and I don't know what all we're going to do with this project yet, I'm going to go ahead and say, give me the save intervals of, um, four times as many snapshots. So yeah, we're going to get 51,200 estimated image results. It's crazy, right? Like this is literally infinite. Okay. Um, and I say that because even though it gives us a number of results, there's like infinite things we can do with it. All right. So we're going to begin training. All right. And now we wait and it will take a few hours and I'll check back in.